I want you to have one part of that be ideas, like just topic ideas or guest ideas, things and people and the discussions that you want to have. Once you have decided, I want you to go back into your project management tool and visually map that out. Put due dates, put when it's going to go live, get all of that information into one spot so you can visually see it. Welcome to another episode of Listeners to Leads, where I'm helping podcasters launch and maintain a lead generating show. I'm your host, Alicia Galati, the CEO and head podcast strategist behind Galati Media, a full service podcast management company. On this show, you'll hear my guests and I discuss everything it takes to launch a successful podcast and keep it running. If you're ready to get leads, land speaking gigs, and create deeper connections with your audience through your podcast, then this is the show for you. It doesn't matter if you are a brand new podcaster or if you are a seasoned veteran when it comes to podcasting. It's important to know how to organize and plan your podcast content. I recently had a discussion on Clubhouse, and if you have ever heard me talk about Clubhouse, you know that I don't know a lot about it. It's overwhelming. It feels really scary. Maybe it's just because I don't understand it entirely, and I haven't really had the time to dive into it, but I was on Clubhouse and I was having a discussion with Britt Lanza and we were talking about why planning your podcast is important and talking about converting your listeners into leads, which obviously both of those things are totally my jam. I love talking about those. As I was having this discussion, we had someone come on stage. See, I'm like, probably totally butchering how to phrase these things. But someone said they wanted to talk. (laughs) They were invited up to speak. They asked the question about planning your podcast and how important is it really to plan out? So the individual who came up, he said that he is a very spontaneous person, fly by the seat of his pants kind of thing. And his wife is very planned, very organized, And he was kind of feeling really overwhelmed with trying to keep up with how she wanted things to be versus how he knows he works best. And I told him, first and foremost, it's important to know thyself, know who you are, know what works for you, know the best ways for you to work. That's where we're kind of going to take this conversation. I want you to keep that in mind as I'm going through these things. Remember that these are going to be very blanketed statements. These are going to be very blanketed ideas of how to organize and plan your podcast content. But I want you to take time before you really dive into implementing this, because I definitely think it's an episode that you're going to want to implement. Before you implement it, I want you to sit down and really think about the ways that you work best. If you're not sure, then there are tons of productivity tests and tools and things that you can check out. So first, we're going to talk organizing. I recommend that you use a project management tool to organize your podcast, to organize your thoughts, your plans, how you want things to kind of work. Now, a project management tool that is really great for those who are solopreneurs or you aren't really sharing these ideas with a lot of people, I recommend using something like Trello or Asana. I've also seen people use Airtable as well when they have a guest-centric show. So if they have a lot of guests on, they need somewhere to kind of funnel those guests into, Airtable is a great way to do that. They also have a template that you can use. But I recommend checking out Trello. If you go to my resources I have a podcast workflow Trello board that you can get access to in the podcast workflow training. So if you go there, you can get my free Trello board. It's fantastic. It works really great. And people have seen a lot of success with that. It kind of takes you step by step by step from planning to recording to production and then post-production and marketing. 
But that's what you're going to really have to look at is which project management tool works best for the way that your brain works and how you like to organize your thoughts and organize your plans and then move forward with that one. Here at Galati Media, we use ClickUp and that is because I have a team. I have multiple people needing to go in, needing to comment on things, and we use a separate list for each podcast that we are managing. This allows us to section each status off. So we have like potential guests, topic ideas, goes into planning, in recording, in production, in review, in post-production, scheduled, or complete. That helps us to just kind of see where everything is very visually. I like the board view on ClickUp, so that's what we typically use in our team. So you're going to pick a project management tool that works best for you. Once you've got that solidified, I want you to have one part of that be ideas, like just topic ideas or guest ideas, things and people and the discussions that you want to have. Then we're going to move a little bit into planning, and then we're going to go back into organizing. So on the planning side, you're going to plan either a few weeks at a time or a few months at a time. And that really depends on how you work best. So there are some people where they want to plan out months at a time. They want to have themes for each month. They want to organize their guests in a way that their themes match up with the guests that they have, or they want to be able to pick the right guests for that theme of the month. I personally like to work weeks at a time. I do have some ideas of, all right, in this month, I want to do a little bit of a theme, but I don't want to do regular themes. That's just not how I work. That feels too structured to me, and I don't want to feel overwhelmed or boxed in. So for me, a few weeks at a time works really well. Once you have decided and planned out either those few weeks or those few months, I want you to go back into your project management tool and visually map that out. Put due dates, put when it's going to go live, get all of that information into one spot so you can visually see it, whether that's list type of view or on a board type of view, whichever works for you, make sure that you get it organized so that you can see full picture. This is what's happening either in the next few weeks or the next few months. Once you have visually mapped that out and organized it, you're going to head over into planning. The next part of this planning is your research. Make sure that you do the research that you need in order to create a quality podcast. We've talked about five strategies to never run out of podcast content in episode seven, and we've talked about how to streamline your podcast content creation process in episode three. Those two episodes are going to be really good for helping you with that content side and like, okay, let's get that situated. And then if you're looking on repurposing your content, we have an episode for that. You can check out episode 15. If you have a podcast where you need to compile data or compile resources or information and you need to cite those sources, then make sure that you have that information in your show notes. Or if you have links that you want to make sure you have in there, just be aware that you are citing things correctly. So if you're talking about a book, make sure that you reference who the author is and have a link in your show notes for people to either purchase the book or review the book or whatever. That's going to show that you are properly citing. Even though podcasting is a audio format, it's still really important that you put that information into your show notes or on your website. Once you've done that research for that particular episode, you're going to move on to the next part of that planning phase, which is if you're going to have either talking points, an outline, or a full script. For a co-hosted podcast, it's more likely that you're going to have talking points. I was recently listening to an episode of Romance at a Glance. Check them out. If you like smutty romance novels like I do, then you will definitely like their podcast. But I was listening to them recently and I love their format and I listened to season one. They're on like season 10, so they might have changed their format since then. But from their first episode and the episode that I listened to, they had both read this book and they were sharing certain parts of the book, 
not really reading it, but sharing their take on it, their favorite part, parts that they didn't like. They kind of rated it on like a hotness scale or a spicy scale and threw in a few other different scales that like I had no idea what they were talking about. But they explained why they rated it certain things. And then they made it really easy for people to then purchase the book if they wanted to. What I really liked about this format, and this is more of like a talking points format, is that they know they're going to hit certain things, but it allows for the co-hosts to have a discussion. It doesn't feel as regimented as maybe an outline would or as a full script would. They're able to riff on things, maybe make some jokes, share some anecdotes, and that's going to help with creating that experience for their listeners that is a more engaging co-host experience. The next type of podcast and like planning it out is going to be an outline. So if you don't use talking points and you don't want to use a full script, then an outline might be best for you. I personally love using an outline. Talking points, they just feel maybe too broad. Whereas with an outline, I know, okay, these are the main things that I'm going to hit. And these are the main things that I want to discuss during this episode. It helps me stay organized. Most of the time, my episodes, I have them listed out with numbers, like 15 ways to do this, four ways to do this. So for me, an outline makes the most sense and it feels more organic. I can still riff. I can still go around in circles with how my brain is working and how I want to tie all these things together. But it doesn't feel as loose as talking points or as regimented as a full script. So an outline might be good for you. The last way to plan out your podcast episode is to have a full script. I do have some clients where their solo episodes are a full script. The only thing that I would really recommend on that side is that you try to make it sound as unscripted as possible. And I know like, but wait, it's a full script and you want me to make it sound unscripted. How do I do that? I'm not 100% sure how some people do it. I personally cannot do it. When I'm reading something, it definitely usually sounds like I'm reading something. But for some people, they're able to keep it engaging, make sure that maybe they're standing up and so they're able to smile while they're doing it. That ends up coming across in the audio. But then I've also listened to some podcasts where it very clearly sounds like someone is reading and I get bored really fast when I hear people reading and those kinds of podcasts just do not engage me. But that's me. You might feel like your audience needs you to have a full script. That's okay. Remember what I said at the beginning. Know you. Know what works best for you know how best you like to show up, and then utilize that in the way that you are organizing and planning your podcast content. So it doesn't matter if you are using talking points or an outline or a full script, make sure that you are consistent with the way that you are planning out your podcast content so that your audience knows exactly what to expect no matter what episode they tune into. If you would like more resources on how to organize and plan your podcast content, you'll see some links in the show notes. You can go to my website at listenerstoleads.com. That is where you can also get the podcast workflow training. Make sure that you go check that out. If you have specific questions, you can always hit me up in the DMs. Like I say, pretty much on every episode, come find me on Instagram, send me a DM, let me know that you were listening to this episode and you were wondering what maybe was the best way for you to go about your show. I'm always happy to quickly chat that out with you. Or if you need more time, then we can always book a one-on-one session. Remember, you don't have to do all of these. Pick a project management tool that works best for you. Plan out either weeks or months at a time. Visually map that out. Make sure you do your research. And then decide how you want to plan out your episodes, whether that is through talking points, an outline, or a full script. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Listeners to Leads. If you found something in this episode valuable, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who you know would also get value from it. 
Want to send me a message? My favorite place to hang out is Instagram. You can find me at alicia.lottie. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was from the episode. And don't forget, turning those listeners into leads is actually easy.